It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And in my ship's case is the model hood. <laughs> Senility is setting in, I'm afraid to tell you. Okay. In spite of the senility, senility, we made a little bit of progress here yesterday. Uh, yeah, we're uh, now on step 39. Yeah. And uh, we got our superstructure uh, uh, conning tower glued down. That'll be in the rollback. Uh, yeah. And our uh, sunrise this morning, it was, uh, at least you could see it, no clouds, so it wasn't spectacular. Uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, roll back and see how it is we got to where we are. I am going to start today's roll back off with what I should have done yesterday but forgot. I've been doing a lot of forgetting lately. Sorry about that. Anyway, I was going to show what those C1 and C2s probably are. If you remember at first I was thinking that maybe they were for railing, then concluded they were too too tall for a railing, and uh, several of the viewers thought that they were stanchions for an awning that goes over the fantail of the Rodney and the Nelson. And, uh, yeah, one of the viewers actually sent a couple of photos. So I'm going to show those photos now. Yeah, I'll try to stop forgetting, but don't hold your breath. Okay, this photo shows the stanchions in place before the awning. Now there's another photo taken in another place. Actually, it's out to sea, it looks like. And uh, the, the uh, awning is in place. Now, they're not real good photos, but at least it gives you an idea of what those stanchions are all about. Okay, what I've done here on this beautiful September the 1st evening here in Winnipeg is uh, make some extra hoops so that after we get the superstructure here, or the, the conning tower glued down, we'll uh, be able to swing them into place because we, we are going to be uh, working on this part here for I think it's about another four or five pages in the manual. And um, I think what I'm going to do with this is, well I haven't made up my mind yet, I don't know if I should apply the glue around the, just let me carefully lift this out of here. Okay, now if I was to apply the glue, reaching over very carefully along along here and in here, um, maybe a little in here, because the the wall of the of the superstructure. Now, mind you, right right here where I painted it in, you you can see here that the that it's caved in. I guess you'd call it caved in. Um, yeah, or I could use the uh, hypodermic needle again and just use the uh, the extra thin and uh, let it wick its way underneath. Uh, that, that's actually the easiest. But then a person risks having it run out onto the onto the deck. Um, I think what I'm going to do now that I think about it, I think I'm just going to go around with the Revell. No, I, I don't like that idea either because it's going to, uh, I'd have to put it on the outside. I don't want to be putting it on the on the outside of this. I want to put it, maybe nice if I could put it on the inside of something like, uh, I don't know. I wonder if I could care, carefully hold this somehow on its side. <clears throat> I don't I don't think there's anything on the other side there. I'm just gonna recompose here. Okay, I think if I am very mindful of where my fingers are on the other side and also that I don't catch these on the green cloth and break them off. 
I'm going to uh, do the inside of the like I did before. And just rely on it to run down. Okay, now before it drips, let's try and get it in place here. Well, I can see I'm going to want to do a little bit of repainting there. Yeah, I'm going to want to do a little bit of repainting on that uh, 77 deck. You can't see it, but when I'm looking right down in there, I can see where it's kind of oozed out a little bit. And uh, we're going to, you know, when you look down right where I'm pointing that you can't see. Uh, okay, but I, I'm pretty sure, though, that once this uh, glue cure dries, uh, it's going to be fairly solid. Okay, we got it. Okay, this one will help protect our funnel. Adjust these here just a little bit here. And then we got these things here sticking out that are gonna, gonna catch on stuff, so that's what this one's for. Now, as I said before, this is no guarantee, it's only gonna help. Okay, 38. I think we've done everything here. I don't see any little parts. The boom isn't on. I know that, the D17. But we'll, we'll be putting that on later. All right. Step 39. It looks like we got some photo etch railing to bend and put on. One piece. Looks like a couple of plastic parts here. That'll be easy. Um, we got some sort of a gun tub going on here that has to go on the top of this thing right here. Well, you'll see that when we get to it. We got a, a photo etch ladder that has to go on the side right there. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's not too much to do here in 39. Although it's probably going to take us a couple of days at the rate I go. I get sidetracked so easily. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if we can find some of this stuff. It's only uh, 725. Uh, okay, E17 and Q6. Okay, E17. I notice we got a little boat here. I wonder if that was for the Nelson. So I don't remember seeing that we need to, need to put down any more boats. Alright. 
Got a little door going on and there's some positioning holes in the top there for something. Okay. Okay. We need Q6. And we need four Q8s. Yeah, no, these are these are gun tubs. They they actually will be going in this direction, and then probably one of those guns that we made up a long time ago is going to plug into the, the hole there. It looks like they're they're keyed a little bit. If you notice that this positioning pin is got is sort of flat sided. Okay, a few minutes ago I was pretty worried, and the reason being is I went to look for the Q3. And I see three here, and this is the Q sprue, and it looks like it was missing. Well, as it turns out, there was five Q3s. And way, way back when we were doing, laying stuff down on the main deck, we needed two Q3s. So I, I apparently I had painted all five of them. Uh, so we got our Q3. So that, that's a bit of a sigh of relief. I probably spent about half an hour looking for that. I thought that, well, maybe it had broken off and it should be loose in the bag, but it wasn't. And then I thought, well, maybe I threw it in, in, in another sprue bag and I checked. No, nothing. Uh, and then, then I spotted this, this tin over on the other side of the table. I thought, could it be? So then when I paged back and realized, anyway, I'm beating this to death, aren't I? Um, all right, and I think that's it for the plastic parts for step 39. Um, the rest is, is photo etch. But uh, what do we got here? 756? I think it's time to call it a night. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And not to worry, I won't be singing to you. At least, not in this episode. <laughs> now, last night, somebody sent us another email. And it this time we got some pictures of what that boom was probably all about. You know, we were looking at that boom that goes across where the little boats are, and I wasn't sure how exactly how it was supposed to go. Well, we got a diagram here that shows how they may have had it at least once in a while. And, uh, yeah... Thanks to that viewer, we uh, kind of now know what we're going to do with it and how it should be fastened to the mast with the easy line later when the time comes. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for sending that email. Now, speaking of emails, I don't have my email address for the model ship in the comments, any, or not in the comments, but in the description anymore like I used to. And the reason I took it out and only ran it for a couple of days was because for somehow trolls are getting a hold of it and <laughs> I was getting all kinds of junk email and yeah I just don't need that sort of thing so uh, I took it out anyway thanks for the email okay moving right along here we can't uh, put these pieces down on the uh, module and until we get them painted now this this sort of thing is is quite easy to be able to rig up a a jig you might say you know to hold it so that you can paint it from all five sides because I don't I don't need to paint the inside however naturally the blue tack doesn't hold it on there real strong but it only has to hold it on strong enough to you know withstand the the strokes of a brush which obviously it does now these ones here, these are the uh, the ones that we had used uh, several weeks ago. The, the we used two of the five already, and 
we, we do have three more that we want to use, but I want to change the color. Now, I, I know that the ones that are on the main deck, they, they have the dark 56 on the outside, but I want to change that to the uh, 66, the lighter, and I'll leave the insides dark. So I want to carefully just paint around just, just the outside. So I suppose I probably could use the blue tack on these and just go like that. Okay. Now for these ones, however, I want to paint the inside, the the uh, 66, pardon me, the, the darker 77, and the outside, the, the 66. So what I'm going to try to do here is use a little bit of the uh, Bob Smith Industries uh, Instacure. And I'm hoping that it's not going to ch going to change the the uh, keyed dimensions of this peg. I just want to put just a very tiny little bit on the bottom of one of Gabe's uh, uh, swabs here, and and just see if it'll stick. Now this type of plastic, it it may not it may not stick to CA glue. Uh, we 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 know that this blue plastic will. But the, but these these things here they they may not so let's just uh, try it and see if this is going to work. Hmm, that's probably more than I need here. Just take a little bit of this off. Maybe a little bit more. Now I don't want to remove too much because it's going to cure up on me here. Now I'm pressing down. That seems to have worked. That seems to have worked. Now, normally I would reinforce something like that, except that what I don't want to end up doing is is uh, changing the shape of the of the keyed peg. Not that I wouldn't know which way it goes on anyway. I mean, it's pretty obvious which way it's supposed to go on. Okay, here's what's happened. Uh, it's not working out. The um, it it, uh, it easily came off. I tried to reinforce it with with the uh, extra thin, not the extra thin quick setting, but with the extra thin CX extra thin regular. Um, and uh, anyway, bottom line is it's, it's broke off. But I've got another idea. You notice that there's a little a little hole already in in the bottom here. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take a very small bit. Go right th right through the hole, and it'll it should come out somewhere around here, and uh, then I'll stick a pin in it. Yeah, why not? That should work. Now I have a bad habit of over engineering stuff, and I'm wondering would it be possible to just force a pin in? Now maybe maybe it'll work, and maybe it won't. Okay, here we are with our morning almost gone. And I've been messing around here um, over engineering, over complicating the something simple. Now it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get painted right there where the blue tack is sticking on because that's going to be plugged into something on the deck. We're not going to see it anyway. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I really do over engineer a lot, but I have a lot of fun doing it. Now, let's see if we can get some painting done here. Okay, so if I hold this thing about this high, right above the dime, um, it should be in focus. Now, I know this, this part here, this one here, is already painted on the inside. The problem is that the part that I'm going to be putting in here is uh, is also the same color 56. And it's going to 
not contrast. So what I'm going to do is use the lighter 77 on the inside of everything. Uh, at least that's the plan. Maybe I'll put it there, just in case it drips. And here we go again with our, our large brush. Now, what's happening is I'm trying to hold this so that you can see in there, but and I can't see in there. That's that's not good. Now, probably from your perspective, it, it doesn't look like it's darker, but but it is.
Now, normally, I would paint the sides last. Well, I guess that's the way I'm doing it, isn't it? Okay, because I want the roof the darker color. I'm going to try and paint the... No, I guess, in, in this case, I guess I would paint the roof afterwards. Because if I happen to come up over the sides with the lighter 66 and get it on the roof, when you're looking down, you would have a tendency to see it more. Um, I might have to give the, uh, the roof here a second coat. Okay, I was going to start going over the outsides with the uh, 66 here. And uh, when I was looking up close at these, I realized, nope, they're not quite ready yet. So I, I went over them again with the uh, 77. Touched up some places on the insides where I didn't do a very good job. And also I noticed when I looked really close that along the, along the edges here, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't do a very good there. There's bare plastic showing. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to let this, uh, you might say, almost a second coat now dry. And then we'll be uh, putting on the 66. But that's going to be in uh, probably tomorrow's rollback. Because I want to wind it up here. And uh, oh, look, we got, we got birds at the bird feeder. Yippee! <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.